Hi, Greg Sokolsky, sports analyst with Athletic Achievements. We're coming to you live today from the sunny sand soaked beaches of Lake Phelan on St. Paul's historic east side. We're going to bring you live not only the All-American Volleyball Camp, but its season-ending Sandblast Volleyball Tournament. Should be fun, should be exciting, we have some coaches, tips. Hey, we're just glad to have you. Enjoy the day. Hello everyone, welcome to Lake Phelan and a beautiful summer afternoon here at the Beach Volleyball Court as we present the All-American Volleyball Camp presented by Greg Silkowski of Athletic Achievements. Today we have the co-ed match, the second of our doubleheader between Team Love and KDWB, at least based on the program. I'm Mike Keating here with Sarah Thingvold, volleyball player at Nebraska and volleyball coach. And uh, what are we going to see today with the beach volleyball game as many of these players take part in court volleyball? Right, so for the last three days, they've been practicing at the camp inside, their inside game. So now what they're doing is they're taking their inside game outside. So we're going to see how they can now work a lot of finesse and ball control in the sand. And uh, what's going to be the big focus for today? Obviously, they'll want to win, but there seems to be more of a big picture feeling, a more long-term prospect to this. Yeah, you know, I think what Greg really wants to emphasize here is how volleyball is a lifelong sport. Volleyball is a fun sport. You have a lot of sports that really captivate a lot of athletes' times. But, you know, there's a lot of boys out there who really love to play, and there's opportunity for the boys. They still, they have USA teams as well. So Greg just has really a heart for these boys, and he really wants to try to energize them to come and play and get the youth excited about it. Hi, my name is Nick Mueller. Um, I go to high school at Stillwater area. I've been playing volleyball for four years and competitively for two. My favorite thing about volleyball is getting a really good hit or getting a really good dig. Hey, I'm John. I go to Stillwater and I'm on Team Love. I really like volleyball. I've been playing for three years and it's my favorite sport so far. Hello, my name is Derek Lingvold. I go to Stillwater High School. Um, I'm going into 11th grade and um, my interest is sports and outdoor activities. Okay, hi, I'm Savannah Handovit. Um, I've been playing volleyball for like seven years competitively for the junior highs and the high school. And I will be a senior. Hi, I'm Zach Lockett, I go to Centennial and I love volleyball and I mean, it's beach day so. Sun's out, guns out. Hi, I'm Gerdon, and I go to Centennial, and I've been playing volleyball for like six months now. I'm Chris Kirby, I go to Centennial High School, play volleyball, volleyball for life. Hi, I'm Julia Walfort, and I go to Cambridge Isaini High School, and I've been playing volleyball for six years now, and I really love the game, I enjoy it. I'm planning on playing in college, probably D3, but still, it's something and I just really enjoy the game and all the people that I've met and I've learned a lot over the years and I really enjoy the game. Hi, Greg Sokolsky back again. I also have the honor to serve as the Executive Director to the Sports and Life Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to providing academic, athletic, cultural, and personal development opportunities for kids in the inner city and urban communities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Today we're at the All-American Volleyball Camp. And for the 15th year, we are very proud to sponsor one of the most unique summer camp experiences. Not only do we have the opportunity to work with women from grades 6 through 12, but in our quest to grow the game for men, we now have a co-ed format. And later today, you're going to be watching the boys and the girls compete together. Also, we are very proud of the fact that we have the highest number of kids of color attending our camp. We do so by providing financial aid scholarship opportunities, again, something not offered anywhere in the Midwest area. So, co-ed volleyball, financial aid scholarships, an outdoor training format to make this a lifelong endeavor, sports and life, dedicated to opportunities, creating fun, and just making this a little better place in today's world. And we are about to start this first of three matches, and we're going to have a guest join us in the booth as we begin this match. Roger, a long-time volleyball player. 
has actually worked the camp, actually did some medical uh, staffing for us, and uh, he'll be coaching the guys' games, and yeah, he's got to bring a lot of expertise to help for this team. Well, why don't you go ahead and join us, Roger, for, if you can, for a moment, or? And uh, well, just tell us about your experience, and what should we expect from the players today? Well, these are young, enthusiastic players, and so what we're going to see is a lot of action. Um, the, the main thing in the sand is to really work on court positioning and anticipating where the ball is going to go. It's a lot harder to move laterally on the sand. Jumping is difficult too, but the main thing is getting into position. And so it's, it's going to be all about positioning and working together. And what does this camp do for these players? It gives them a, well, it gives them a chance to practice another type of volleyball, but what else does it offer them? Well, the, the big picture is just enthusiasm for the sport and a long range uh, outlook. So, so making volleyball just kind of part of their lifestyle. Thanks for joining us, and we begin the first set of this best of three. Team Love, naturally, in the replica jerseys worn by Kevin Love at this year's NBA All-Star Game. And Kevin Love himself is actually looking to sign a professional beach volleyball contract with the NBA in lockout mode. Hmm. We had, uh, oh, the ball. You know, communication, again, these boys, we have two twins on the team here, Nick and John Mueller. They're ball from Stillwater. In fact, we have this team, all the kids are from Stillwater, but they all haven't played together before, only the two brothers. Derek Thingvold, one of them, I'm assuming there's some relation between the two? There is, he's, he's my boy, he's my son. He is gonna be a junior this year. He really has only played a little bit of grass and sand here or there. So he saw court for the very first time this week and it was really fun, he did well. And I'm pretty sure that will not influence your commentary of this match. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm ki we're kidding, we're, we, we, we wish the best and for all the players out here. And I believe Derek's sent it out of bounds, so uh, maybe you'll have a little talking to with him afterwards. Yeah, you know, Derek really likes the floater serve, trying to get him to work on his, um, and that's another thing about serving. You have your float and you have your top spin. And um, both of them definitely have a finesse to them. Now I like what this KDWB team is doing and the Team Love uh, team after uh, the first game. The All-American girls were talking about how hot the Sam was, so as uh, one of the Mueller's over serves, everyone on the KDWB team wearing black socks and a couple of them on the Love team wearing socks as well. I suppose that helps shield against the sand temperature? Yes, it does. That sand gets really hot in the afternoon sun. They actually do make beach socks that ki that people can wear but these kids improvise and they're wearing their own socks so it works and then again there you go the difference between court and sandball i've got my sneakers on i'm pretty well shielded against the sand as walfort hitting up and nice kill by guy in the speedo shirt yes garrett on from centennial in fact all three of the male players on KDWB's team are from Centennial, Zach Glock, Chris Kirby, and Garrett On. Derek Thingvold just got under that. Another factor to keep in mind, what the coach for the boys team just commented on was the wind. When you're serving in the wind, it's gonna hold up the ball and it's gonna fall shorter. So he asked all the boys to make sure that they take a step up. 6-5. Team Love over KDWB. On, couldn't get in position and it goes to Team Love for the point. It's now 7-5 and again, best of three. We have rally scoring in beach volleyball. No different from your court volleyball, but we play up to 21 with a 23 point cap. And just like the tiebreaker set in court volleyball, we play the third match up to 15 if necessary. Team Love up 8-5 to five over KDWB. I kind of wish Kevin Love was here to see this. <laughs> Maybe he could give him a couple pointers. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Well, he's a master of double-doubles. I'm sure he'd be the master of some spiking or some kills or even a block. His height? Yeah, <laughs> if only we were so lucky to see him, to have him come. Kevin, if you're watching this, uh, please stop by. Oh, <laughs> come to Minnesota. It's glorious. It's beautiful. <laughs> Learn from you. Have some fun. Bring you to, I'll bring you to Stillwater. <laughs> it's a landmark in Minnesota. Random tangent, but I actually, I know my mother's boss owns a business in Stillwater. 
Yeah. Kitchens of Stillwater, actually. And that concludes our random tangent of the day presented by TSB Television. It's 10-6, Team Love over KDWB in this first set. Wall fort there, and that's Ong. And that's John Mueller going to wall fort. Wall fort digs it. On again. Thingvold to Handeville. And that was Nick who was short, but right idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, it looked like he thought he was on the court. Here's sand, you can't snap so hard when you're away from Nick wearing the sunglasses, John with the longer set of locks. And Thingvold hit the net and it just stays in bounds to give Team Love their 11th point in this first set. It was touched by a KDWB player, it was touched by Chris. Chris Kirby. On again. Thingvold with the dig. Handeville. And Nick was blocked. And uh, with the block, what I believe was Chris? Yep, it was Chris Mueller. No, no Nick. Nick Mueller. He had the swing. Nick Mueller had the swing, and then uh, it was blocked by KDWB. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nick got in the net, actually, but Chris was up the net for the block. Again, they don't have numbers, so getting the names and the faces down takes a little bit longer, but we'll have everything set for you by the third set if we get to that. 12-8. Thingvold tried the dig, but no one was in position to take the pass. And that makes the score 12-9 in favor of Team Love. Out of bounds. <laughs> and Zach Locke, not too happy about that. No, no, he's not. He's a strong player. He's a basketball player. He's a good setter. He's been setting at the camp all week. I might have to adjust this to a TV PG rating. <laughs> uh, look at that, and the ball comes right. Well, I thought it was going to come under the scores table. I thought we were going to end up playing. <laughs> Doesn't that happen? The ball comes so fast. It's like, duck. Or right near the playing surface. The only thing that's stopping a ball from getting over here is this table, and I don't trust it if it's a high bounce. It's a good thing we're playing on sand. If they were playing on the traditional court surface, that ball would be bouncing around. Yeah, and if you look at my hands or volleyball players' hands, you know, you get used to the ball hitting you in different places. So it comes as it is. <laughs> well, I, I've gone to many court volleyball games over at the sports pavilion at the U of M and I'll go to watch uh, warm ups and you have to be ready to block a few balls or deflect a few high ones as they bounce. And out of bounds is team KDWB so team love goes up 14-11 and we've had a very close first set. Ah, it was blocked by Handeville, but there with the dig is wall for it. And Handeville comes up with another near block. And that ball just spun around. And the pen goes. I'm gonna go. Oh, there it is. I was about I was about to go on a high-speed chase for it. As I mentioned with this microphone, I feel like I'm hosting family feud. <laughs> Usually you have the earpiece in. Normally. And with the block was Kirby, and Kirby playing some great defense at the front of the net. Yeah, you know, just if they take a little bit of their wrist snap off, they would have it in the corner. So, you know, I'm hoping that the coach is going to be able to communicate that with them. 14-13 in favor of KDWB. Hit the net. And that goes to KDWB, and they've scored the last three points to tie this up. Oh, they really are. They're having a rally score going on here. Don't want to break that momentum. Momentum is key to volleyball. Especially with rally scoring when you have a point on every play as Thingvold tries to turn the tide. Can't do it. Handeville setting up to John with the dig, and oh, Chris Kirby hit the net, went out of bounds anyway. So Kevin Love stops the bleeding momentarily, or Team Love. Yeah. Wall fort ready. She really has a nice 
Thingvold with the dig, Handeville setting up to one of the Mueller twins. And with the block, once again, Chris Kirby. Chris is up there. He is a super player. He has a good, good, um, good leaping legs. Just got up there, put his hands up, and he got that ball block right there. I wonder if he plays the post in basketball, if he does. Ooh, Thingvold overshot Handeville, and Chris Kirby was there for the put down, and Handeville couldn't do anything but stand and watch. Yeah, you know these three boys over here from Centennial. You can see that they're good friends, that they work well together. I think that team chemistry really makes a difference. And a lot of chemistry overall. All four members of Team Love are from Stillwater. You have the three Centennial representatives and Julia Walford from Cambridge who played in the last set. So you have a little bit of experience to go with the chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 I agree. 17-15. Team Love over KDWB, Walford calling for it, and that's not how they wanted it to go. 18-15, Love serving. Walford and Glock were both calling for it. Walford did call them off in time, but once again, communication. Kirby going to on, and Handeville touched it, sends it back over. Thingvold getting ready to, for the Mueller, and on is there, Chris Kirby! With the big time spike. He is being a beast at that net. Wow, nothing is getting past him. Showing his offensive capabilities on that point. And Mueller twin pointing out, hey, we've got extra balls. <laughs> Love two points away from winning set number one. Over serve, Glock does. And so now Love is two points away. 19 to 16. Handeville to serve. Glock, oh, that was a beautiful touch on that volley. Right over the block, nice open hand, but yet you can't be an open hand tip, but what he did was he did a nice little roll shot right over the block. And, and those tall boys that were playing deep, they had to move forward and missed it. KDWB misses, and this is Mike Peden. This is Sarah Thingvold, and we are presenting this beautiful match to you here at the Lake Phelan Court with the Team Love now at game point. <laughs> Nick Mueller to serve. And Chris Kirby hits the net, and that will wrap up the first game. Did it? I see 21. 2018, the official score. We have confirmation from our official judge so thank you for doing that so now love is serving for game point they have two game points and avail missed the touch there that gives point to kdwb 2019 but team love still at game point or set point and going to one of the mueller twins that's john and he overshoots the court. He took some off before earlier in the game. He was snapping too much. That one, he didn't get enough snap on. Didn't come down the court. Tied up at 20. Again, we played to a 23 point cap, so next point is big. And look at that. Glock got tripped up. Give credit to Team Love. Exactly, exactly. What did he do? He pushed for that deep corner. You hit those deep corners, it's almost an automatic point. Once again, Love at game point 21 20. And it hits the net. Are you kidding me? Zach Glock, that was not intended. We can assure you that. And he ties us up. That's a kill shot if I ever saw it. Yeah, 21-21. They have to win by two. 23 cap. And there goes Derek. Shanks off of his platform for a point for KDWB. So KDWB now at game point. Again, we have a 23-point cap, so if Love gets this next point, the next one will decide it. Andeville going and blocked by Chris Kirby, and KDWB comes from behind to take set one, 23-21. Yeah, that was an awesome game, wasn't it? It's really learning just to play together again. This is the first time they've really played as a team, the four of them. Um, all week long, they've been playing mostly sixes they're playing fours it's in the sand it's not in the court it's a different game that it is so as we take this set intermission we'd like to remind you you can order a dvd copy of this by visiting the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com that is the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com and 
as we continue with our summer coverage. And of course, fall sports coming up in the near future, which includes traditional court volleyball. So why don't you talk to us about how this game will help both Team West and KDWB for the fall volleyball season. For the fall volleyball. So you have one more week where it's off, time off. But sand, just like with any sports performance, if you work out in the sand, it's a stronger workout than when you're on a court. So this is helping their verticals, it's helping their finesse, it's helping their ball control. Um, it's really a great um, way to work into um, their court play inside. Indeed. and. Small crowd today, but a beautiful day here at Lake Phelan. And we actually had a chance to speak with some of the lifeguards here who run the swimming area. So we'll take you to a quick video of that and come back for the start of set number two. Mike Peenan here with Zhang and the City of St. Paul lifeguard staff. And it's a beautiful day out to be in the beach. And I'm sure a lot of volleyball players are coming in here to cool off. So uh, what are some tips that they can take to ensure their safety? Uh, tips is to definitely drink water because you always want to stay hydrated on the hot day like today. And what about pool safety? You know, what's the age and when, when should uh, kids wait for a lifeguard to go out? Uh, pool safety, I mean any age could come out. It's just right here we're open 1 p.m. till 7 p.m. So whenever a lifeguard, it's always safe to have a lifeguard around. So whenever there's a lifeguard around, it, you can always come swim here. So. And even with the lifeguard, what are some ways uh, kids can make sure they're safe when they're out here taking a swim? Um, well, if they don't feel so safe, they can, uh, they can have uh, life jackets. We do have life jackets available for kids who uh, can't really swim out here, too. So, Well, we've got six people who make sure kids who decide to take a great day and go for a swim are safe and have a lot of fun, and we thank you for your service and what you provide for the city of St. Paul. Oh, thank you for coming out. Glad to have you. Thank you. Mike Beaton here with a few camp participants that took place in our earlier match today. So why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are and what you like about volleyball. Um, I'm Emma Goddard, and I like just playing the game. It's just so much fun just to play volleyball. I'm Rose Coughlin-Smith, and I just like being on a team. I'm Sonia Adelgren and I like setting and playing with my friends. And are you a player? I don't know. I'm supposed to be the camp director, but they're kind of fun to hang out with. They like the shade. They have a lot of fun. They're always trying to get my t-shirt, see? So, no, these are great kids. We had a, had a really good week. It's a good way to wrap it up. And uh, what do you think of the action so far in this uh, older game? It looks like it's been a tough match, but we'll see what happens. They're really good and it looks like a lot of fun. It's really fun to watch and they're really competitive. I'm really impressed. I'll tell you, I thought the younger girls, I'm really impressed with uh, our nice All-American Blue t-shirt team. No, they're playing very well because they're playing a very senior dominated group with KDWB. And so I'm hoping these guys will bring their team together next year and they'll be in the finals. Yeah. And uh, tell us, you know, what attracts you to volleyball out of all the sports you can play? Um, everything. It's just such a fun, welcoming sport. You just, everybody would want to play volleyball, I guess. I like the spiking. It's a great game. You can play with your friends just for fun or competitively. And what about you? It's a great lifelong game. That's why we bring them out to the grass and the sand. I think the training benefits outside is great, but also not just the benefits, but it's a lifelong sport, a beautiful day like today. You don't have to be in a hot gym. It's a great way to enjoy it. All right, our timeout is just about to wrap up, so we got to go back out. But thanks for speaking with us, and uh, enjoy the matches today. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. You Stay cool. All right, our second set will start shortly. We begin set number two here at the All-American Volleyball Camp at Lake Phelan. I'm Mike Peden with Sarah Thinghold as KDWB has a one-set lead or game set term kind of ambiguous. <laughs> yep, they have. They won. The, they took the first game out of three. So the first two games are at a 21-23 cap, and if we need a tiebreaker, that one's up to 15. And I think I've been mentioning setting game because at the court volleyball game in NCAA, they switched that up. What used to be games are now called sets. But speaking of game, set, whatever you want to call it, love starts with a 1-0 lead. 1-1. One, one. 
Again, KDWB wins this. They win the match. It's a best of three. If we go to a third, that's played up to 15. Garrett on to serve, and that's going to be just short. And I think he knew it as soon as he released it. Yeah, you could tell. He just didn't have, you know, his arm swing that came across for the serve. It just, he just didn't have the technique that he needed. Didn't have the strength. He's going short and didn't make it. And speaking of technique, that is Nick Mueller just brushing the net and it hits the ground before anyone on KDWB can react. Kirby, once again, his play at the front of the net has just been outstanding. It has been, it really has been. He's really picked up his level. I think Stan might be his game. Watching him on the court, he's definitely playing a stronger game here. Well, it's worth pointing out, there's no volleyball for the high school level, so a lot of these players, if they want to play, this is one of their options if you're a man. Yep, exactly. They have a juniors teams as well during the winter time, just like the girls when they start their game. In fact, two of the Mueller boys here, they play on um, Crossfire, I believe. Walfort unable to take that volley from Nick Mueller, I believe, and that makes the score four to three in favor of Team Love. Very close second set. You know, when I was sir, um, coaching last fall, I had so many boys saying that they wanted to play volleyball. Coach me, coach me. But you know what? There's not court space for it, and there's not enough boys. There's too many sports. Well, a lot of... In, at least in the state of Minnesota. And a lot of those boys in the fall, their time is spent on the football field. Mm -hmm. And soccer. Chris Kirby, oh. did he paint the line? Official says he does. That was surprising to me. It did look a little long, but she has the better view up there. That's the key. She is up there, and we are down here. <laughs> Thingvold setting up, and Handeville. That went off. She got a little caught up in the sand, I think. She just couldn't backpedal fast enough. We talked about that in the first match. You're playing on a much more coarse surface. It's not as smooth as your hardwood or your plastic or vinyl. Yep, you have no shoes on. Um, and again, it's sometimes your feet can get caught underneath the sand and it trips you out. 6-5 in favor of KDWB. 7-5 as Handeville overserves and goes out of bounds. has been playing a lot of volleyball today. She was in the girls match just before this, the same as um, Julia. They've been playing a lot of volleyball. And they're doing really well. Again, Savannah, she, um, I think I maybe mentioned it in the first game, but she's um, an, an all-star basketball player. But she's doing really well here in her game of volleyball. Well, it's worth mentioning again. Whoa, that was a tough serve. It just goes off the net and thankful. Once again, those net serves, those net points. Always tough to predict. Yeah, kind of like a let in tennis. You just got to get up there and, and hopefully you make it there in time before they hit the ground. I'm having troubles with these horse flies. Are you getting bit? I'm not getting bit, but I'm getting some bugs and we've got some Japanese beetles. We've got some regular bugs. It's getting up. There are some perks to your traditional vinyl or hardwood volleyball game. Yeah, definitely. Forget the sunscreen, where's the insect repellent? There you go, there you go. No bugs inside. That's for sure. 9-7, KDWB over Team Love. Over, over, over. Glock, setting up to Walfort. Handeville, ooh. Someone touched the net and it was KDWB. That gives the point to Team Love. I'm impressed, Savannah went up really strong. She had two, two guys, strong guys on the other side and she ended up winning the point. This time it's gearing on for the point. But it's dug by Nick Mueller. And Mueller stumps Zach Glock, and that ties it up at nine points apiece. Yep, Nick, he was having troubles, remember, in the very first game. First he was hitting it too, having too much of a, a snap on his wrist. He was too late to the ball this time. And at the end, he was hitting it out of bounds. I think he's getting back into his rhythm of the game, keeping it in play. 10-9 now, and Thingvol just couldn't get off the sand. Yeah, he just didn't get to the ball quick enough. You just don't want to go to your knees. You know, sometimes 
taller people have a little bit harder time moving quick enough. Especially on a surface like sand. And that was a beautiful set. And with the finish was John Mueller. And once again, while we're close to being tied, it's 11-10 right now. And another seesaw set here. So even if KDWB sweeps this and wins in two, this match has been by far competitive. Nick Mueller serving. And Chris Kirby did his best, but Zach Glock really messed up his opportunity. Yep, yep. He went in. He did a really nice one-handed stab at the ball, got it up, went over the net, but it drizzled out of bounds. Help, help, help. Over, over, over. Come on, come on. Nick Mueller's got to send it over. That gives KDWB a chance to set up. Kirby setting up for Glock. And Thingvold with the dig. Why? Now Kerb, or Glock showing his defensive Woo! skills, but Ahn just couldn't find him, overshot him, and Kirby can't, or Glock can't save it. <laughs> he just said it's in cornbread. I don't know if that's a surface or if that's just his play. And that ball heading right back over to KDWB after sailing out of bounds and give credit to John Mueller for digging and giving Team Love ultimately that point. Yep, yep, yep. He did a really nice job. He dug the ball, he got back, he got it set, and he got an attack over. So we see some players from KDWB uh, watching the action on the sidelines, getting a break in the shade. 13 12 the score. Oh, and Thingvold, he went left, the ball went right. Once again, the sand. The, the enemy. Yeah, exactly. And that was a beautiful floater serves. You know, when you have that floater, you never know exactly. Sometimes it's going to drop on you. Sometimes it's going to be moved left or right. And we're tied up again at 13. This is getting serious now. John Mueller with the kill. Textbook kill right there. That was beautiful. very nice. I think, was it Derek who had the pass? Savannah set it up, and John went for the kill. Very nicely done. John serving. Nice. That's about as good as you can get in terms of the serve. Yeah, that was a beautiful serve. It just got caught right over Chris's head, right? Yeah. Right between Julia and, and Chris. <laughs> you see some strong defense here from Team Love. And so what does he do? What does Zach Locke do? He offers a little touch. He saw you know what he did was he had the overhand, he had a tip. That was illegal, so now it goes over to Team Love and they got a, they got a point. In sand, you can't do that. In court, you can. Another difference between the court and the sand beach game. For a complete tutorial on the beach volleyball rules, give Sarah Thingvold a call. <laughs> Thingvold with the dig, and Walford digs it right back. Glock going for it. Nick sets it up. He has to send it over though. Can't really attack. KDWB. Oh, miscommunication again. I thought Kirby was in better position, but Glock decided I'll go for it, and it cost him. Yeah, yeah, it did. Oh, and they call the team out, uh, timeout. KDWB. They just got you know mixed up with a little bit of their communication. The volley. It was really nice volley. Good finesse going on. Um, and they just they got stuck miscommunicating. They look a little tired too, to be honest. Maybe that sun's draining a little bit. That makes the score 17-13 here in set number two. Again, if Love can pull out what they win here, we will go to a tiebreaker third set or third game. We're still debating on what to call this. <laughs> and that's played up to 15 points. And uh... In sports, everything starts with the feet. In serving, everything starts with the toss. In order to make your number one offensive weapon work for you, you have to have a consistent, soft pass that you can make great extension with. So if you want to be a great server, get that toss up there. Enjoy the game. Keep it consistent, and you're going to win and score. As we start, well, we can resume set number two. And wow. 
interesting play. He sure did have, was it, was it uh, Zach who had the nice swing in the ball? Derek just happened to be there, put two of his hands up, and it bounced offset block over back over the mat. Even I'm left speechless. KDWB was standing still, and the rally continues for Team Love. They are now two points away from forcing a third set slash game. And Kirby has to send it over, but it, he's been taken out of that front attack. And Handeville, Handeville just not finding a rhythm yet. You know, she's not a, she's, that setting is not her game. She's more of an attacker. And here she has been setting fabulous for the team love. And she's doing her best that she can. And that one was not successful. And Kirby got the block, but nobody was there to retrieve it. And now Team Love, one point away from winning set number two. And the other difference I've noticed is they've really removed Chris Kirby's effectiveness in the front of the net. You know, I don't know if they removed it or he's just not getting as much action, but he sure was effective the first game. He is still in the front row, but just haven't seen a, as much play from him. On sends it over to the thing vault. John for the set point. Not quite. But Love still has five set points to work with. Yeah, you know, that set was a little short. He came in a little bit too early, just couldn't keep it in. in play. Thingvold will try to finish it off. Yes! Again, Kirby tried to deflect it, but position, very important in volleyball. If you don't have it, you're not going to get those points. Yep, and he has a block. He was caught off the net. It really, in each, you, in any game, you have to be on the net, penetrating over the net, or it can certainly come between you and the net, and that's not what you want to play. So that forces a third tiebreaker set in this match in our co-ed competition between KDWB and Team Love. We played a 15, and if you want to order a copy of this, just visit the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com. I don't know why you wouldn't want a copy. We've had a couple of great matches today that went three sets. We have a lot of uh, interviews, a lot of uh, great action today here at Lake Phelan, and it's a really good time here in this mid-80s degree day without uh, sticky dew points. It really is nice, you know, and look at these players that we have. Look at over there. We've got Handeville and Zach Glock playing rock, paper, scissors. For the serve. That's what they're doing, yeah. People ask us all the time, sand volleyball, grass volleyball, hard courts indoor. I'll tell you what, as a sports analyst who works on player development performance, I just really enjoy having three sport athletes and crossover training. The benefits you have from playing the outdoor game and the grass game is you have to sometimes look in the sun. You have a little heavier ball. You have to learn to explode off of that sand and you've got to move those feet. So the benefits that you have from the outdoor game not only will make you lighter, faster, and more focused on the indoor game, but now you have a great opportunity to have a four or five hour day in the sun, not very expensive, and you can play anytime, any place. We're behind grass ball, sand ball, enjoy outdoor volleyball. The players take the court one more time in this third and deciding set of this match. Apparently the crowd is going wild. One family is hanging around. I don't see any rain, do you? No, no. Bright right, sunshine is all we have here. I don't know if my skin will like that afterwards. So we play up to 15 here in set number three, and Team Love starting where they left off. Yeah, Thingvold had the first serve, and he got an ace. Hopefully they're not tiring out too much. This game, what I just was told by the up ref, Andrew Brown, is that it is to 15 points, but there's no cap. They play, you have to win by two. So we could have a volleyball rendition of the 2009 Wimbledon men's final, or last year's game that went to six, 70 to 68 in the final set. Ooh, yeah, I suppose we could, but I, don't, I hopefully it won't hope last not. long. <laughs> I hope not. No, no. There's only so much water here. Yeah, exactly. Walfort serving. We are tied up at one here in this final set of play. Kirby again at the front of the nets, and once again, his attack. 
I think KDWB will look to establish that here in set number three. Yeah, yeah, you know, you would think that they'd say, hey, you know, Chris was pretty effective in the first game. How can we get him the ball again? Handeville sends it over. Doesn't set up. That gives KDWB a chance to attack and on. Lobs it. John Mueller. Kirby's trying to save it, and that goes out of bounds. You just really can't run in the sand like you can in court volleyball to chase it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's kind of like sometimes you're running in place because of the sand. It's hard to get there. But she did, you know, Julia, give her credit. She did a good job. She almost got it. Service ace by Nick Mueller. Again, everyone on Team Love from Stillwater. KDWB, all Centennial representatives with the exception of Walford, who is from Cambridge. Cambridge, about an hour north of here. Town of about 5,000. Uh, they switched it up, and now um, Zach is doing more setting instead of Chris. And the score right now, it's not working out in KDWB's favor yet. It's 4-2. Again, Team Love in this third and decisive set. Net serve, and Chris Kirby just deflects it back to Team Love. That gives them a chance to attack, and Thangvold with the point. Yeah, that was a close. That was really tight to the net. He did a really nice job. He didn't have too much wrist snap, and it sailed it right past, and Julie caught it high. Nick Mueller. Serving. Walford sends it over and out of, oh no, I thought it was going out of bounds, but Walford just good positioning. Exactly, you know that ball just took a little bit more topspin than he thought and it hit just short of the out of bounds line. That's the perfect kind of uh, juke you want to give your opponent. That gives KDWB a point, it's now 5-3. They're trying to stay in this. Walford saves it, on sends it over, and another beautiful lob. It was a double contact? It was a double. Double contact. No, that was, guy, that was clean. He can hit a double on the first contact. Yes. Yeah. On the first contact, you can do a double. Well, sand ball, there's, there you go. There's another example of sand ball versus inside game. What was called was when the attack came over, um, Zach, he caught it here and then snapped off of his chest, and then they still played it and hit it over the net for a point. That's not usually what can happen when you're inside game. But it's allowed on the, on the sand ball. Well, that required a bit of a review system, but the point goes to KDWB. And now out of bounds is John Mueller on that kill attempt. That nods up this match at five apiece. Now, and a missed serve, service error on Garen on. That's not what KDWB was looking for as they were trying to get some momentum and leapfrog Team Love to win this third set. Exactly. Oh. And that cancels each other out. <laughs> yeah, let's see if um, KDWB can get it back. Here comes um, Zach. He's been setting for them this game. Let's see what he can do. He's a strong player. Yep, so strong that he served it out of bounds. Three straight service errors. And with the score as it is, we can't keep having errors at this pace because uh, we're not going to have a winner. And that breaks the monotony. This time a beautiful serve as it trips up Chris Kirby. Yeah, that was very short. She hardly, she hardly got that over the net. And it hit the net right in front of the four position and drizzled over when nobody thought it was, pretty much it looked like it was gonna hit the top of the net and roll straight out of bounds. But it's Still 8-6. Just switched sides. The officials had not ruled play to begin yet, so that serve had to be retaken. Nick Mueller almost got tripped up by the court net, but not to worry. KDWB scores the point. It's now 8-7, as we have a couple of our All-American girls keeping score for us. We appreciate that. We have some very multi-talented 
people here. Too, too much strength behind there. You know, they're getting they're hot, they're getting a little tired, that sun's draining them a little bit. It's like they're trying to put a little bit more power behind their serve because they're getting tired, but two of them in a row, they're sailing out of bounds. We've seen a lot more service errors in this third set than we did in the first two. That serve is clean, but Garen on sends it out of bounds. Point to Team Love. KDWB was contending that Love touched it, but the line judge saw it differently. Yeah, yeah. Derek, he made an attempt for it, but thankfully he missed it because it went sailing out of bounds. Thingvold serving. Perhaps. Could be worse. We could have the mosquitoes flying around. And a crucial one at that because Team Love is leading 11 to 8. They are four points away from winning this match. So often athletes ask us at the Olympic, professional, even amateur level, how do I perform when it counts most? How do I make the big play? Hey, I would love to have a peak performance in competition. Well, as player performance coaches, we do encourage athletes to not only work on the conditioning and the skill development, but they also need to look at the no, no, the inner game or the psychology of competition. Remember this, what you do off the court predicates what happens on the court. If you are emotional in front of parents, you'll be emotional with your coaches. If you don't perform well in a classroom on a test, you may not perform very well in the stress of a competition. Therefore, we are saying in your training, don't forget your training as far as conditioning or the skill. But the mental side, you're going to make big plays with you. We come out of the timeout, and Team Love leading 11 to 8 in this third and deciding set. You know, when a side out is called, what can one of the means of calling a side out for volleyball is that you really want to break the momentum of that server. And so, what Derek needed to go back and really think about was really focusing on keeping, just serving a nice easy ball, keeping it in play. Thingvold getting another ace, that, making it 12-8, and his service game could be the difference here in this third set. Love now two points away from match. Yep, he, if you noticed, he served, first he served to, to the right side of the court. This last one is to the left side. Let's see what he does next, if he's going to keep it mixed up. Thingvold, Handeville. And a beautiful save there by Nick Mueller, but KDWB has a chance to set up Garrett on. Oh, just a beautiful touch. Yeah, Garrett, nice. He had really nice legs on that one, got up really nice and high. Savannah couldn't block it. Just right over the block. 13-8. And it was touched by Handeville, Chris Kirby with the front point. It's now 13 to nine. KDWB scoring some points here. Uh, do we have a counter rally going? Yeah, I think we do. Here's the momentum. Andeville, one of the Mueller twins. That was Nick Mueller painting that corner. Man, you couldn't place that better if you tried. Yeah, you know, I'm so glad for him. He's having a really hard time, you know, really connecting with that ball, and that one must really have felt good for him. Really good because now it's match point for Team Love. They have five match points at their disposal. Walford won't need them. No, I thought that was going out. And a block by Kirby. Thingvold has to send it over. On with a chance to set up. Thingvold sends it over the net. Kirby sends it back. John Mueller gets another chance for an attack. And it just goes out of bounds. No, it hit the line. It hit the line. I thought it went out of bounds. Game, team love. Wow, what a game that was, wasn't it? Now that's the way that you want to end the match, end the game. On a point where we can't figure out what's going on. <laughs>
great. It was a great volley, great momentum. You know, they really stuck it out, really came together, and it wasn't a miss serve from the. It wasn't somebody serving out of bounds for a point. It was a good volley, good pass set, and attack. <laughs> Two great matches, and we'll try to get a word with the teams. But uh, as far as the match coverage goes, uh, we are done for the evening, and so we're gonna. Stick around again, get some interviews. But Sarah Thingvold, thanks for stopping by and uh, giving us an expert insight on volleyball and making me look like I know something. <laughs> you were fabulous. One would have never knew you've never done volleyball. You were great. Thank you so much for coming. We should do some court volleyball games sometime. There you go. Let me know. <laughs> thanks again, and we're going to try to get a word with the teams shortly. Mike Peden here with Team Love, the winning team in our second match today, and I'm here with. Nick Mueller and Savannah Hanville and Thingvold, Derek Thingvold and John Mueller. And so why don't you tell us uh, what was it like uh, going out there and uh, getting dirty in the sand? Um, it was kind of weird at first, you know, playing indoor for three days. So I think um, during the beginning, some mistakes um, obviously were just the difference between indoor and outdoor. But I think we did a good job of adjusting and ultimately it pulled off. So I think we did, a, we did good. And Savannah, how did you... Uh, keep your stamina going because you had to play in the first match that went to three sets and now you had another three set match. It was tiring but I'm an athlete so I'm used to playing many games in one day. Do you play other sports as well or yeah. I hear you're a good basketball player. Yeah basketball and lacrosse. So, so you yeah. keep busy and so does Derek Thingvold over here and uh, what strengths what skills and what lessons do you gain by having this kind of a summer camp where you play the beach game? Um, are you, are you, by playing the beach game, I don't know. I just think it's uh, it works on my balance uh, a lot, uh, and it works on like coordination. Like it's a lot different than the court game, and um, I don't know. I think it just gets me more focused and like needed to work harder in playing here than in court. And John Mueller over here, how does the chemistry develop? Because all four of you are from Stillwater High School and so you, maybe you've all played together or at least you're familiar with each other. How did that help you today? Um, we all know each other um, but towards the beginning we were kind of getting used to playing together and everything but then we started to gel and things started patching well together so then we clearly pulled it off but yeah it's really nice to go to school together. And I asked one person this already but I'll ask all of you who do you want to say hi to that might be watching this program? Britney Spears. Hello. I love you. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> You are th going to throw a shot up for Lady Gaga or something? Uh, sure. I'll say hi to Lady Gaga. <laughs> Who else do you want to say hi to? Um, I don't know. Just any family members or friends that are watching. Hello. Savannah, if you have any other people you want to shout out, uh, here's your chance. My friends. Hi. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and Nick, what about you? Um, just whoever may be watching that knows me. Hey, what's up? You know, <laughs> text me. <laughs> um, and Mike Anderstrom. Hey, he's a volleyball player. He's been my inspiration. So. So if you've got his number, uh, text him. He'll, we'll give it to you. No, we're kidding. <laughs> we're, no, we're kidding. Thanks for speaking with us, and uh, congratulations on your three-set win. Thank you. Mike Peden here with Team KDWB. I'm here with Garrett On and Chris Kirby and Julie Walfort and Zach Locke. And we're going to start with you, Garrett. Uh, what does it mean to play out in the sand and get dirty? Uh, it was a really fun time. For me, it's the first real sand tournament I've played, and I really enjoyed everything about it. And Chris, you uh, all three of the men players are from Centennial, Julie from Cambridge, so how did that help with the chemistry having three Centennial representatives and a person who played in the earlier match? Well, it helped a lot because we know each other, so we're more like, we hang out a lot, get the <coughs> strong chemistry going. So us being friends too would be making it easier to get to know her also. So, And Julie, you played in the first match, so how did you keep your stamina going after a tough three-set match in the girls' game mm -hmm. for this one? Um, well, I just drank a lot of water, and I stayed in the shade just to stay hydrated, and I put socks on so my feet didn't get burned, <laughs> so that was a lot better. <laughs> so moral of the story, water and socks. Yes. <laughs> and I'm here with uh, Zach Locke, and it looked like you were having some fun out there, just yep. real loose and kind of the Tory Hunter of the team. Oh, uh, yeah, Tory Hunter, uh, yeah. Yeah, and probably should watch the language a little, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we won't hold that against you. Uh, thanks. And so, just what was it like, though, to go out there? You had a lot of fun. Yeah, what does it mean? Fun. We're, we, I mean, they were they won it last year, so kind of came in, won the first game. It's exciting, and then this second game kind of fell apart, made a couple of errors, but it was all around a good time. Hooting a toot. And anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching? Well, I don't have cable. 
<laughs> so we'll, we'll put this online. Oh, hi, whoever I'm saying hi to. Thanks, and mom. We'll give you another chance, Julie. Um, hi to my best <laughs> friends, Becky Doll, Natalie Larson, Whitney, everybody. I don't know. I just don't know. And any uh, idols at the front of the net you want to shout out to or anyone else? <laughs> Coach Hag teaching me a lot. It was a lot of fun with him this season, so, yeah, Coach Hag. And what about you, Garrett? Uh, <laughs> everyone who lives in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'd like to go out there myself. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thanks, and congratulations on getting here and just for having a great time and showing us that volleyball is a great year-round sport. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that concludes our coverage from here. For everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching.